something is keeping me up. I just, but I just, I just feel not right. Like I can't sleep. Today I have a story, a very special story for you. It's a true story that happened to me. And this story is part of how I started to believe in some fate. It's a long story, so if you have some popcorn, if you have something, you know, maybe you can play it in the background when you're cooking. So at the time of the story, I'm a college student. I'm a poor college student, and I'm at a house party in San Francisco, in sort of the Italian district of San Francisco. Well, one of my friends was renting an apartment there. And it was a very big apartment. It had like three bedrooms and she was having a house party. And the party was winding down and we were all kind of just congregated in her room. And uh, one of my friends, a guy named Jahari, a really close friend of mine at the time, we spent a lot of time together. And he was what you would say like a master manifester. Like he was able to manifest things seemingly instantaneously. That was kind of like a weird superpower he had. Like. If he wanted something and needed something, it would just pop up. To give you a small example, one time we were, me and him were meeting our friends, you know, at a concert. We took a bus, you know, to an area, like kind of like a street jam kind of concert hall in San Francisco. And neither of us had tickets because we were poor college students. But we were going to go there and we were going to meet our friends there. And when we got there, we were just going to kind of like sit around or maybe go to a bar across the street and wait for the concert to be over so we can hang out with our friends. As soon as he stepped off the bus, he stepped his foot on two tickets, two brand new tickets to that concert. And we ended up going into the concert. So he was, some people would say lucky, but I would say he's amazing at manifesting. And he used to always make a joke that whenever we were together, someone would drop something. Like he would see someone drop something and there would, there'd be no fail to that. Every time we spent time together, some, we would see someone drop a bag or drop anything. Anyway, so we're sitting around in this house party. It's all calmed down, you know, the music's low and everybody's chatting. And my friend's sitting on a computer. Now at this time, this is like dial-up internet time, like AOL status. He looks over at me and he says, you know what, it would be amazing to go to New York City this summer. So the school year had just finished. And I looked at him and of course it's kind of silly. I would, he didn't have money to go. I didn't have money to go. I think I had like $20 in my pocket, maximum. Maybe $100 to my name, 50 more like. He's like, yeah, I wanna go to New York City this summer. And I'm like, sure, let's go. Kind of just because I just knew it would be possible that we would get there somehow. So he goes online, literally turns around and goes onto the computer. I'm sitting on the couch and he's clicking around through his like Yahoo email account. And he sees an email saying, you have just won a trip to New York City. That actually happened. And he looks at me and he's like, you're not going to believe this. I won a trip to New York City. And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And we kind of just kept hanging out for the rest of the night. And the next day he calls me up and he says, you know what, you would never believe it. I was walking down the street in San Francisco like a month ago and someone took a picture of me, like a Polaroid picture of me because he was wearing Levi's jeans. It turned out that he had won some national contest for Levi jeans. He was just some random person walking down the street and they liked his look. He was kind of this tall, slender kind of guy and they liked his look and they decided to feature him for an advertisement. He goes, well, I get to go to New York City, take some pictures for an advertisement for Levi's jeans and I get to bring someone with me and you know whose that is, that's you. So literally two days later, so total of like four days later from this party, we're on a plane to New York City. We're on like JetBlue, I think it was flying to New York City. So we land in New York City and my mind is blown, you know, like we're in New York City. We're all expenses paid trip to New York City. We're driving down in the yellow taxi and you just see building and building like into the distance and you see the Statue of Liberty like towering over the skyline. It was just like, wow, we were here, you know, like we wanted to be here and four days later, here we are. 
So we pull up to the hotel, and the hotel is like the Westin Hotel, which is basically like two blocks, two or two blocks from Times Square, like the Times Square. The trip starts. You know, he's got all these things he has to do. He has to go to like the Levi's advertising headquarters, and they have to take photos of him. And he was going to be featured in People magazine. And there's this this girl that was there who also won. And uh, everything was kind of just weirdly clicky. We got to do these shopping sprees. I wasn't part of the contest, but he's like, dude, just grab some jeans. Like, grab some jeans. They like shut a store down for us. So everything's like happening. I'm just kind of like this sideline friend who's just enjoying this experience. The first night comes up and uh, it's hot. You know, it's summertime in New York City. And we're in the Westin Hotel. We have this really nice room. There's like two beds and, you know, like a window and ledge. And it's really beautiful, really fancy. Probably the fanciest hotel I'd had been at at that time. The first night, my friend is fast asleep. I mean, he goes to the bed. He's been doing things all day. You know, he's been doing like fittings and this and that. And he goes to the bed and he's out. You know, he's out cold. And me... I can't sleep. I absolutely cannot sleep. And I'm tossing and turning in the bed. Just completely tossing and turning and just have no ability to fall asleep whatsoever. And my bed has a clear view of him and he's just like... (sighs) Sleeping. Just out. Like a light. And I'm tossing and turning in the bed and it's hot and it's cold and I can't feel comfortable with the pillows, this and this and that, and I'm changing positions. And this goes on for hours, like hours. I sit there and I'm looking at the clock and I just see the time passing, you know? It's 12, it's one, it's two, it's three, it's four. And I'm just not sleeping, just cannot sleep. There's something that's keeping me up. I keep thinking it's the heat. I keep thinking it's this and that. And I, I even at one point, I moved my whole entire blanket and pillow to the window ledge. And I was trying to sleep on the window ledge thinking that the window would give me some like fresh air and I would make me comfortable to sleep. It didn't. And the next day, you know, everything is amazing. Again, we go, we have free lunch and we go out to dinner and we're having all these things and we're back at the hotel again. And I'm having a blast. Don't get me wrong. I'm having a blast. But nighttime comes again. And sure enough, my friend is fast asleep, out cold. And the same thing happens. 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4 a.m. Again, I can't sleep. I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm tossing, I'm turning, I'm flipping my pillow. I'm going no blanket, I'm going blanket. You know, like I'm running to the window ledge again. I'm just walking around the room like I'm just... Something is keeping me up. I just, but I just, I just feel not right. Like I can't sleep. You know, the next day again, we go out. We're having an amazing time. He gets featured in his cover of People magazine. You know, the girl is so nice. Me and all of everybody, we're all getting along. The guy who's running the campaign is amazing. Like we're just, everything is vibing. People in New York are amazing. We're just having a great time. But I come back to the hotel again. And the same thing happens. Now this is night three at this point and I can't possibly stay up another night. I mean, I simply am losing my mind at this point because I just cannot sleep. I just cannot sleep. And the same thing happens. I look over my friend, it's You know, he's out cold, out cold. And me, I'm tossing and turning. I'm tossing my sheet. I'm going back to the window ledge. I'm going back to the bed. I'm flipping my pillow. Nothing. 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1, 2, and finally 3 o'clock in the morning. At this point, I'm borderline delusional. And I cannot stay, cannot stay in the bed one minute longer tossing and turning. I have to leave. I need to go out. I need to get some fresh air. I just need to move. I need to get myself tired. I just have to. I mean, I cannot sleep. I'm wide awake, 3 a.m. So I decide to go for a walk. Now you have to understand, this is shortly after 9-11. New York City is 3 a.m., dark, 
scary place for a young college student, but I'm not thinking. I walk out the door and the hotel is a ghost town. It's completely empty. No one is around. I'm walking down the empty hallways and all of the windows and even the staff at the front counter are like, I can't even see them. And I'm thinking to myself the whole time, this thought keeps running through my head. Why am I this person? Why am I this person who can't sleep? Why am I this weird person who has to go for a walk at 3 a.m. around the hotel? What's wrong with me? Why am I like this? Can't I just sleep like my friend and just wake up, you know? And I keep playing this scenario in my head. I'm like, why? Why me? Why? Can't I just sleep? And so I start thinking like, you know, maybe I should just come up with a game plan because, you know, like as life is, it's always better to have a plan and you feel like you're not doing something stupid. So I think to myself, okay, I know what I'll do. We're at the Weston Hotel. It's only two blocks from Times Square. It's 3 a.m. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, I have a plan. I'm going to go to the middle of Times Square. It's going to be completely empty, right? And I'm going to sit in the middle of Times Square and just look up at the sky. And I'm going to be like alone in the center of the universe, like the center of humanity. Like Times Square is like the center of humanity in a lot of ways. And I'm, especially for American people. And I'm thinking, this sounds great. I'm going to go to the middle of Times Square. I'm going to have myself a moment. I'm going to reflect on my life and things. And I'm a college student and I'm going to figure it all out. I'm just going to sit there in the middle of Times Square and experience the moment. Right? I'm just going to experience it all. And that sounds like a good plan. And, and I start feeling some positivity. You know, I'm like, okay, well, maybe I'm not that weird. I just need to go for a walk and I just go to Times Square and I'm going to have this amazing experience all by myself. And it's like I did something, right? Like really something special. I really accomplished something. I'm in New York City, can't even believe I'm here and I'm going to go to Times Square by myself. So I walk down the lobby and I push through the rotating doors. Now in my head, it sounded really romantic, you know, walk to Times Square sit there under the lights and advertisements and just be a human all alone in the streets, you know? But I realize your imagination and reality are two different things. You know, I push open the door. It's this like heavy door and the electricity is kind of like not even on anymore. It's so late. And the street is barren, absolutely desolate. And it's dark And the buildings are freaking huge and dark as hell. It's like the sky is muddy. And newspapers are flying across the street like... And I'm just this young, stupid, insomniac college student walking down the street, basically. But I'm like, you know what? You're here. You're out. Let's go for a walk up the street. Let's go to Times Square. I can see it. You know, the hotel's so close, I can see the lights already in the distance. I start walking up the street, you know, and I'm kind of puffing my shoulders. I'm trying to make myself big, you know, and I'm walking through, um, you know, someone please don't kill me, you know, but, you know, I'm walking, right? I don't take that far step from the hotel, maybe in something like 10 steps, not much. I'm walking and uh, I hear a sound and it curdles my blood. Help! Help! Screaming. Now I'm freaked out. I'm by myself. I'm in New York City. I've been here for three days and I have no sleep. And I'm hearing a scream, blood curdling scream, and I don't know where it's coming from. I'm looking right, I'm looking left, it's dark. Dark everywhere. And I hear it again before I even have time to think. Help! Help me! And I look to my right and down this loading dock for the hotel is just darkness. And I hear the sound echoing from the distance of this ramp. And this ramp is big, you know, about the size, you can put a big truck down this ramp, but it's absolutely pitch black. You can't see nothing. 
but the sound is coming from down there. Those situations, you're kind of, you're at a moral crossroads. Do I die or do I save someone's life? What's going to happen here? So I decide to go down and uh, into the darkness. And trust me, it's the kind of dark where you can barely see your hands, almost. And I'm walking down the ramp. The scream has stopped. It's completely silent. And so I continue walking down this pathway. When I get to the bottom, nothing is there. And I hear it again, help. And it shivers your spine, absolute desperation, screaming. And I see only a big, gigantic dumpster. You know, one of those industrial dumpsters, just the big metal bins, the huge ones, eight foot across and however tall. It's grimy, it's covered in dirt, and it's freaking a hotel dumpster. I mean, it's, it's got shit in it. And that's it. I don't see anything else. But again, help me, help. And it's whole. This time, I'm close. I start to look around this dumpster bin, and I go to the back of this dumpster bin, and I see what the sound is coming from. There is a man pinned against the wall and he's covered in uh, like a jumpsuit maybe like a maintenance guy or something but he's he's pinned against the wall the bin the gigantic trash pin was pinning him against the wall from the ramp that i had just walked down and he was absolutely pinned against the wall so i immediately grabbed the edge and it's grimy it's gross i'm pushing and i'm pushing as hard as i can i mean there's, it's not moving. It's just absolutely not moving. So we kind of do this count off like one, two, three, huh. one, two, three, huh. and finally he's able to shimmy himself out this gigantic bin and he goes slamming against the wall. <laughs> and he's out and he is an absolute wreck. I mean, the guy is profusely sweating. He looked like he just jumped in a pool. He was covered in just grimy garbage smell and just completely just terrible, right? And he grabs me. He's like, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving me a hug. I mean, this guy, I can't even understand what he's saying. I was there for so long. I was against the wall. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. No one is going to hide. Just hugging me. I'm like, that's okay, man. That's okay. It's okay. No one is around, no one's around. I'm just stuck here for so like, like just, you know. The guy had been basically pinned against this wall for who knows how long, more than an hour. He'd been pinned there. And it's nighttime, 3 a.m., no one is around. No one is around but the guy who can't sleep. And the craziest part about this story is the moment he gave me a hug, the moment he gave me a hug, I instantly felt tired, so tired. All of those three days of being up just hit me like a ton of bricks. And instantaneously, I had to go to bed. And I walk back to the hotel and I'm covered in dirt and I'm, I just, my feet are dragging. I can barely get back into the hotel and I sleep dirty like a baby in the bed. Just out cold. And on the fourth night, I sleep perfectly. We have to ask ourselves, why is it that I couldn't sleep for three nights and I'm out cold on the fourth night? Was it that someone above or the universe knew that on the first night, I'm not going to leave the house? I'm not going to leave the hotel on the first night. I just can't sleep. I'm going to toss and turn. Even even on the second night, I'm going to toss and turn and try to stay. Only on the third night did I actually decide to leave. Although the story is just one example of like something that's kind of faded, like you were, I was supposed to do this thing. You know, something kept me up for three nights. That's when I was able to help this man who was in need. So I know that's a long story. Um, have a think sometimes like is life really that random is it just that you're an insomniac maybe something is asking you to leave the house maybe something that went wrong was supposed to go wrong right 
you never know. And with that, thank you for watching my video. I hope this story was at least interesting for you. Made you give a little think about destiny, fate. I'm not sure, but I know that ever since this moment happened to me, I was, I didn't take some things for granted after that.